we're going. The oh. GPU tips high? Yeah, it's at like 72. Jeez. And I have my fan at, at 100%. I mean, when I play Warzone, everybody's like, hey, yo, your GPU kind of toasty, though. And like, it's like chilling around like 75. <laughs> Dude, I, so whenever I, I have my RX 580 rig going, the temps are at like, in, they're in the 50s because I undervolt everything. And it perform like each card performs the same as my 1080 Ti for mining. It's insane. And it's like not even the same wattage. It's like half of it. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, this week we're talking about the end of the world. <laughs> and I, I got that idea because uh, during my stream today, we watched a video that Let Me Know did. And it was about the different ways that the world could end. And it went through everything from, like, asteroids to pandemics to, like, natural disasters to man-made disasters yeah to environmental stuff so it was really interesting and then uh yeah. i i had talked to chris about it is that my phone what? i don't know i don't know if that i don't think mike picked that up or not, but. um I, I was talking to my wife last night because i saw a tiktok where the guy was talking about how we went to death from defcon 4 to defcon 3 and nobody's talking about it so well, because apparently, like, the the big thing is... Because I looked it up, and I saw an article about it. And um, apparently, we we as citizens do not know when we hit DEF CON 3 unless someone says something. So um, they're probably trying to keep it under wraps just because they don't want people freaking out. We've already had enough panic over the past year that, you know, if, we, if something else happens, we're just going to go into chaos, right? People are going to buy toilet paper and... <coughs> No one else is going to be able to get it and stuff like that. Graphics yeah. cards are going to go up double the price there right now. I need it's toilet just, paper. It's just crap like that. Um, yeah. But, I I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. Because I, for a while, I've been like, yeah, something's probably going to happen soon. But, I don't know. I mean, people on TikTok, I've seen them saying all kinds of stuff, but... Everybody in the comments is like, I tried to find stuff on this and I can't find it. But the TikTokers just comment or they make videos and claim that the reason why you can't find it is because the media is censoring it. Like, as soon as something gets posted, they take it down. Um, and that this guy's getting his information from somebody at the news or something, you know? And basically, the stuff that I've been hearing is that um, China, <laughs> this is super conspiracy. I don't, I'm not saying I believe this. I'm just saying that's what they're saying on TikTok. Um, China started World War Three by causing the pandemic. Like, that they purposely let out the coronavirus to mess with the economies around the world, which, if that's what they were actually trying to do, I would say it worked. Uh, I mean, all kinds of stuff is out of stock. I, I know that um, I have a lot of military friends who are talking about how you can't get ammo or guns right now. It's, like, impossible. If you go to, the, if you go to a gun shop and try to buy ammo... If they have any ammo, you're limited to, like, two boxes, which is, like, maybe 100 rounds, you know? And it's range ammo. If you're buying hollow points, it's, like, maybe 40 rounds. So. Jeez. And hollow points is what you want for self-defense, obviously. So. Wait, so is that, is it limited because people aren't making it? Or are they limiting it? Are they limiting it because they want to make sure that the military has enough? I mean, they're, they're, as far as I'm told they're limited it's it's hard to get because the coronavirus caused a lot of the factories that make ammo and and guns themselves to be hard to get and then yeah, once guns, once guns biden hard to make. well once biden took office there was like a huge rush to buy guns because everybody's always afraid that you know once a democrat gets yeah, elected yeah. it's going to cause a bunch of gun control stuff yeah. and so right now apparently an ar-15 like a good one is really hard to come by so yeah, and like I mean, obviously not not to get political or anything, but he's also done a lot of those like bans and stuff like that recently. And I mean, like I I doubt someone's gonna get one of those so they can like defend themselves against like the Reds or something like that, right? <laughs> but, but like, because this is the freaking '60s. But um, I mean, still like it does it does definitely affect things a lot so uh, yeah I, I i guess i understand why everything's kind of crazy right now but dude i don't know like end of the world bro <laughs> that i mean i 
it's kind of no, not the end of the world. Right. I, the end of the world was just a general kind of idea of what we were going to talk about because I also wanted to talk about like otherwise the world can end. Um, because one of the things that that video mentioned was that if there were to be right now the 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 biggest risk pandemic wise is if the bird flu if there was a strain of the bird flu that mutated to the point where it could spread human to human because right now it can only spread from uh bird to human so people get the bird flu and it it doesn't spread to other people like it happens all the time people who clean like bird poop off of roofs and stuff get it um but if it were to jump from human to human all of a sudden we could lose like 1.7 billion people. That's how bad it would be. Well, what even is the bird flu? I've never even heard of like what it actually causes. I don't I don't know much about it. I just know that like the avian flu has always been something that people say I I don't know what it is about birds, but something that has to do with that causes it to be way more lethal than other viruses. So, um, it says bird flu, cough, fever, sore throat, muscle aches, headaches, shortness of breath. Um, what, what the, uh, but that sounds, yeah, it sounds like a freaking flu. Yeah. Why is bird flu dangerous to humans? Let's see. Uh, it leads to a particularly severe form of pneumonia. That leads uh, to viral pneumonia and multi-organ failure and many people who become infected. So in other words, uh, kind of yeah. like, kind of like Corona, yeah. but on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, it's Corona that can fly. It's ridiculous, dude. That's crazy. But, um, because dude, that's always been like one of the big things is is uh, <clears throat> a, an illness that can take up like a huge portion of the population because that that crap's always changing and always evolving and it happens fast. Yeah. And Bill Gates always talks about that. That's why he was so worried about COVID. Well, I mean, the scary thing about viruses is, like, the Spanish flu. The, it was very similar where the Spanish flu showed up, killed a lot of old people, right, elderly people, and then it kind of went away, and then it came back the following winter and mainly killed young people. So oh, like whoa. it, so like it mutated and became way more lethal for young people because the young people are the only ones that were still passing it because anybody who was elderly that got it usually died, so those right. people weren't infecting other people anymore, but all the young people were getting it and they were fine, so they were still spreading it and so eventually it mutated to the point where it only killed the younger people, like it was most most lethal to them, and so like that means I've, that the thing that happened with COVID, right? Well, it's possible. They, I've been seeing, because people keep coming in and they're like, oh, did you hear about this court trial? Did you hear about this? And I'm like, I don't really pay attention to the news. But what I do pay attention to is corona. That's about it. Like, that's the only thing. I, yeah, I haven't paid attention too much to, to all the new Biden stuff. Like, I heard about the gun control stuff just because of friends and PKA. Yeah. But that's about it as far as Biden. Like, I haven't heard too much about his other policies that he's right. messing with or anything. Um, but, uh, I, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, I do hear, you know, oh, there's a new strain over here. There's a new strain over there. There's a new strain that we think is in New York, you know, but apparently there's a strain in Canada and because of that right now, there's a, I think, is it Toronto or Ontario? I think it's Ontario. Ontario is like bad lockdown right now and nobody's talking about it. Wasn't well, that that double mutation that they were talking about? Something like that. All I know is that uh, they, uh, they have it locked down to the point where like no, they turned off the cell service. Uh, at least Ontario, that's what I heard. Yeah. Ontario. Yeah. And I saw videos on TikTok where it was like people rioting against being in lockdown because basically Canada went back to like no masks, everything's fine. Right. And then Ontario is just all of a sudden just shooting up in cases and deaths. Um, and they're super worried about it. So they put everything on like super strict lockdown curfew. Um, and so there's been like riots and to try and stop people from organizing these riots and stuff like that. They shut off the cell service. See, I think I've never had an issue with lockdown because I'm always inside anyways. But like. 
when I hear stuff, I'm like, what the? <laughs> like, I I guess and because it's like they're kind of trying to control everything, well, right? But like, so when I was in San Fran, we went into a legit lockdown. Like, you were not right. supposed to be out. You weren't supposed to be driving about unless you could prove that you were going somewhere important, like going to. Which I mean, they didn't really enforce because it's like all you have to do is be like, oh, I'm going to Target. You know, because there's stores everywhere. Wow, somebody really redeemed a Munyanyo. Munyanyo. Yeah. Munyanyo. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, because I was considered essential, it was so weird, dude, driving through, like, San Francisco just to, like, a somewhat empty highway, or freeway, I mean. Because, you know, it's yeah. always bad traffic there, so... It was eerie, uh, especially at night after like beauty and stuff. You have to stop and go every five freaking minutes. My roommates were just mad because all the fast food places closed like super early. They'd be closed at like yeah. seven. <laughs> Can't get your freaking Big Macs and Walmart. Can't get your Wendy's. Um, I'm trying to say oven um, like less. Really I've been trying to to cut back on saying filler words. It's hard though. I say um a lot. I do too. Um and like. I say like really bad. Even, where does that word come from? Um. It's just a, it's a. It is exactly what I said. A filler word. Like you're using it yeah. to fill empty space because it feels awkward to leave silence. So you're supposed to get comfortable with silence. And you're supposed to be comfortable talking slower. Because if you talk slower, it gives you a, lo a more of a chance to come up with what to say next. You know, and get and your, your point across. Your words are a little bit more clear as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I got to work on that, too, because when I get excited or I have a lot to say, I will start talking fast, and all of a sudden you start hearing, um, and, like, a ton. Yeah. And I, I go back and watch podcasts, and I notice it a lot, so. Oh, I do it way too much, bro. But I, people always Working complain about me talking too fast. or like, dude, you should be a rapper. No! I Somebody get it, I talk gonna, 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 gonna... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So what I was getting at earlier, though, was on TikTok, they're talking about how there was Chinese troops, a large amount of Chinese troops that went to Canada for some training exercise. And, and the training is, has been over for a couple months, and they, they didn't leave. You hear that? Oh, no. No, I didn't. Oh. Little man was, was playing, and uh, my wife was like, <laughs> said like uh she damn it she said dad is working and he's like i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry no he'll do something and my wife will will say she's not happy with him she's like i'm not happy with you right now and he'll, he says mama i happy you <laughs> and i keep telling him like I'm like, hey, that is not a thing. You can't make somebody. You can't just like snap your fingers and all of a, all of a sudden you're happy now. Like, you know, yeah. leave Mama alone. Because <laughs> he'll like upset her by doing something he's not supposed to, and he'll like run up to her. And be, I happy you. Like try to like you know like stop stop her from being sad about it <laughs> or angry. You know, frustrated. He's gonna, he's gonna be a superpower when he grows up. He's gonna he's gonna happy people. I happy you. Um, you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, they they were talking about how we're at DEFCON 3 and that there are right now, supposedly, which the news is not reporting on, more Chinese troops in Canada than there are Canadian troops. Whoa. Well, I don't get why the training was even in Canada. I don't know. We, we, I, I have no idea. He said wee wee. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, wee wee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, for context, because I was I was looking this up. So we haven't been at DefCon three since nine eleven. Okay, we have. So it's been a. We, yeah, we haven't. We haven't been. At oh, 3 I thought you said we have since nine eleven. I was like, damn. Okay, I was wrong. But what does that mean then? Because the other thing they were saying is that Russia right now has been mobilizing troops uh, near the, the uh, Ukrainian border. And right. so some are saying that it's, it almost seems like 
a mobilization for a coordinated attack or invasion. Which technically, okay. technically, a military invasion is okay. one of the one one of the things that fits that definition is mobilizing more troops than there are in another country than that country has. So they're saying technically, uh... at that point, China has invaded Canada. But like I said to our listeners. I cannot confirm any of this because you can't find any of it in the news. Like only the like, if you look up Chinese troops in Canada, it's all stuff from December. But I, but I see these people on TikTok showing articles from like days ago, and then people in the comments saying I can't find it, and the person saying I took that they, they were taken down. So who knows? Uh. What's going on? So okay, DuckDuckGo, like I said. What's DuckDuckGo? Uh, you don't know what DuckDuckGo is? No. You you haven't been catching up on your Joe Rogan lately? Nope. So DuckDuckGo, they're saying that it's or Joe Rogan at least says it's better than Google because uh they're what the oh, never mind. So um he said it, it it's not as censored as Google, for example. Okay. So I went on there and I looked up Chinese troops in Canada, and the first thing that pops up it says it's from Snopes, so it's credible, but I don't know how recent it is. Because I saw articles. So this is actually not very recent, and it says not true, but it's not recent. Yeah, the this articles one, though, the articles these people are showing on TikTok are literally from like the past couple of days. In the past couple days. Yeah, but I mean, there's, there's, there's no, there's no way you can say that they, you know, they didn't like altercate the, st or you know, fabricate articles because people do that all the time, to try and scare people. Okay, from the Watchtowers dot org, it says that's from twenty twenty. Yahoo News. Oh yeah. China Yahoo. scolds Canada over Parliament support of Halifax security. What the? F this isn't. <clears throat> All I'm saying, China's been scary lately, though, bro. Yeah, their, I mean, we've been in a trade with, war uh, with them for the last four years, haven't we? Dude, you know what scares the crap out of me the most, though? That thing with Jack Ma. What's that? You gotta he's the me dude up. that created. He, he's the guy who created uh, Alibaba. He's like he was the richest dude in China, second richest dude in the world, I think. Besides, like, or, I don't know if the second richest person in the world or just richest person in China, but dude, bro, he legit. Like he's he he badmouthed the government and then he just disappeared. Well, richest dude in China, by the way. Have you heard? Have you heard um the horror stories of COVID in China? With them like sanitizing the entire streets and like killing people who no like the media censorship and cover up stuff. No. So, I mean, Joe Rogan has been criticized by about talking about it because it's it's considered a conspiracy, but there is no evidence that can really debunk whether whether uh the virus came from a lab, like like whether it, uh, you know, and yeah, one of the things is that China really censored where it came from. They right away blamed it on a wet market, right, and stuff like that. Um. But like they said, this wet market is literally right next to this lab. It's it's just too much of a coincidence. Well, dude, freaking Wuhan University, that place is that like I think Wuhan in general is like where a lot of the smart crap happens. Because you know where else? Or, or actually, no, you know what else they came up with over there? They made electric jets for the first time in Wuhan. Electric jets. Like like electric jet engines. Are those used yet? No, because it's it's technology that doesn't exist yet. They, they but they just they figured it out. It, it's when I say doesn't exist yet, I mean like it's not actually like out there being used. But there's a whole article that I found about it, uh, and they there's like a whole paper they have. But right. legit, I think what it was is it, it's uh <clears throat> they used compressed air. Yeah, it's a plasma jet engine. Um. So this is the prototype device built by a team of scientists from the Institute of Technological Sciences at Wuhan University uses air and electricity to generate propulsion under laboratory conditions. 
it, I think what it was is it's compressed air, and then they use a microwave to turn that that air into plasma, and then they shoot it, and it creates like a pretty good amount of thrust. It's insane, bro. Would that be faster than a normal jet? It's not, it's not about it being faster. I think I think it's actually supposed to be like um, more efficient, comparable. Uh, that. But think about how jets work. You have to actually use fuel. Yes, Here and jet jet air. fuel jet fuel is super expensive. And it contributes to a lot of pollution. Yep. So that's why it'd be a good idea. Um, and electric jets are a big step towards like getting out of that uh, that point of no return situation. Yeah. People warming and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and then the other thing was there were the um, whistleblowers they call them, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was basically people that tried to report. On what was really going on in China during the whole COVID, like the peak of it, mm-hmm. uh, and it sounds like it was just censorship to the max. Like they really just try to keep anything from getting out. Because um, I remember seeing videos on Reddit, and they would be taken down. Like I would go to show somebody, I would try to send it to a friend, and he'd be like, "It doesn't work." And then I look, and it's already gone. And it was. It was literally nurses in hospitals saying about how they like are running out of gloves and respirators and all this stuff like that, and that there's literally just people laying in the hallways because they don't have any more beds. You know, like it was bad. Uh, at the at the peak of it in China, it was bad. Well, you you you've played Fallout before, but you don't remember any of like the lore, do you? So, in Fallout, even though it's supposed to be, like, 1950s style and stuff like that, what happened was Russia, like, they still collapsed, and then China took over, just like in real life, right? Um, but they, they, they were the ones that ended up invading because they needed oil. Okay. And we had discovered fusion. You're probably like, okay, why is this relevant? Because it's the exact same thing that's happening where it, they ended up invading and then crap happens because they don't have enough resources. I think that's what's happening. Because if they're if they're if they have such a uh, high population density and stuff like that, and they don't have enough resources to support that, they're going to be in trouble. So, yeah. And they no, out, they true. outnumber everybody, right? How many people live in China? Uh, population of China. I'm um, look at the population of India because I think that might. Be they're bad. close. Yeah. One point three six six billion in India, one point three nine eight billion in uh China. And I mean That's India India doesn't have any problems with anybody, do they? China. Really? Yeah. Did not know that. I mean it makes That's sense. That's why that's why like if, if if we were to go to war with uh with China, India would probably hop in. Which uh honestly, although like there's plenty of memes about about like uh Indian scammers and stuff like that, I would be more than happy to team up with them because they're smart people. Yeah, they can they definitely have some smart people. Yeah. Uh I was I was actually uh reading something and it was talking about how World War Three might play out if it happened today. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about how South Korea would one hundred percent use it as an excuse to invade North Korea and just take over because they're so done with their <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair i mean dude i don't know why we have it man because if we invade north korea then they're it gonna, causes stuff with russia like, yeah well no they're gonna be like hey china can you nuke these guys we're just trying to you know live in peace over here so um South it would get the crap out of them and then we would fight it would china be for so uh, basically the problem is that for world war three to start somebody has to push the first domino and yeah. nobody wants to push that first domino. Uh, it, and I will say that I feel like if we were to go to war today, like if the whole world was just like going to crap, I don't think it would be a straight nuclear thing. It would be threatened, but I don't think anybody wants that. What I think would happen is the U.S., because, and I mean, no offense, not to get political, I just think that Biden would try to stay out of it as long as we could. That's just kind of how... Democratic presidents are. If if Trump was in office, he would be like, "We're sending people right now," you know. Yeah. But uh, I mean, there's the whole thing, and this is—I think this has been—I—I—I I, I 
I could have seen because every time something gets said that has to do with politics, people go back and forth about what's real, fact checking wise. Um, and I believe it was fact checked. I could be wrong, so don't come after me. Like I said, I'm not trying to be political. I'm just trying to state what I believe is facts. Right now, Biden has said that we're going to pull troops out of Afghanistan by September 11th. Trump wanted to do that by May. But because that got delayed, or because that wasn't, like, reasonable, Biden basically moved that date to September 11th. And everybody's saying that, like, he's take, he's like, it, the way that it was presented was that Biden was taking credit for pulling the troops out. But it was like, no, because of COVID, it just hasn't happened yet. Like, it was supposed to happen sooner. Like, it was supposed to be happening next, next month. You know? My mic but, is muted because there's a plane going by, but... No worries. Uh, but... It's Okay, so for starters, somebody had called bullcrap. They were like, uh, yeah, like he's actually going to do that. And I was like, I, I don't know. I mean, the fact that he's saying anything about it is kind of nice. But um, Well, I don't think we only have troops in Afghanistan, which is the thing. Oh, of course not. That's, that's, so, I think that's what they were saying. Um, I don't know if it was you that was saying that, because I remember I, had, I think I brought it up to either you or maybe it was maybe it was one of the mods. But um, That might be one of the places where you have the most troops, though. Yeah. I think we have like 2,500 I mean, troops there right now. That's what you always hear. It's like, oh, hey, I'm getting shipped out. It's like, oh, where are you going? Oh, Afghanistan. Or, oh, hey, I, ha I had a <coughs> brother or something like that that, you know, served in Afghanistan and they they uh, died or whatever or something like that. You know, like, it, it, you, you hear, that a, hear that a lot. And um, so, yeah, that might be one of the places that uh, probably makes the biggest difference. Um, also, just to be clear, I'm not saying I had a brother that died in Afghanistan. I'm saying as an example, <laughs> in case anyone misheard that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I. So. What? If so, I think maybe we'll actually title this World War Three because I think that is a more appropriate title than the end of the yeah. world. We've really focused on the whole World War Three thing. Uh, but I'm looking at this article. It is. The Express. Daily Sun, the home of the Daily Sunday Express. It's some UK. What's that kind of name. It's some UK okay. like journal website, and this article is cut, titled uh, "World War Three Maps: The Six Places Where World War Three Could be, Could Break Out in 2021." Okay. Uh, here are the examples. Uh, the first one is U.S. Iran. It says on Friday, January 3rd, the U.S. undertook a drone airstrike following a series of orchestrated attacks on coalition bases in Iraq. Over the past few months, an attacks on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, all of which have done uh, on the orders of General Soleimani. That right? was last year. Yeah. So, this is from April. This is updated April 20th. Published. Published. Yesterday. Wait, what? Published April 20th? So, this is fresh. Okay. I didn't realize that. Because uh, I read it this morning. Mm -hmm. So, basically, it, would, it could escalate from there. Because right now it's kind of like in limbo because we just changed presidents. Trump is really hitting on that. Uh, Iran, Israel. Tensions between Iran and Israel have been frustrated for a while with low intensity warfare raging across the Middle East as a result. The former nation supports an anti Israel group in, in Gaza, Syria, and Lebanon in particular. With While Air Israel often strikes at I Iranian forces across the region, overall, Israel has an endeavored to create an anti Iran coalition at a diplomatic level so basically over there government wise it's getting heated pretty bad uh and then this one i thought was interesting u.s and turkey because you never really hear about turkey but it says tensions between yeah. the u.s and turkey have heightened over the past year as a result of u.s providing authorization to turkey to clear the syrian border so what it's saying is that the u.s and turkey might like the cause tension with other countries by working together uh, because the U.S. basically said, uh, hey, the U.S. basically said, hey, do what you got to do. We'll back you. And so they've basically been sending troops over to, like, the Syrian border. Yeah, because at first I thought you were saying that we were going to fight. Yeah, I know. That's the way it looks. The uh, and Turkey. then we got <laughs> Kashmir. In the past 10 years, the relationship between India and Pakistan has worsened, bringing the countries to the brink of war. Uh, in 2019, Prime Minister Narendra Narendra Modi attempted to reduce the autonomy of Kashmir 
and change citizenship policies within the rest of India. Bro, that's messed up because uh, you've seen the terminal, right? Yeah. With, with, so uh, with Tom Hanks, yeah, it, yeah. And so you remember the concept of that, right? His his country basically overthrows the government, starts a war, and because of that, the the government that they try to overthrow basically revokes citizenship of that country, and so he can't go anywhere because he's no longer a citizen of a country. That so he sucks. belongs nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> like legally, he can't travel. So he's just stuck at the airport. And that's basically what's going on over there. Is they're like messing with citizenship and stuff like that, which nobody wants. Because it's like, dude, like you're literally saying I belong nowhere. Yeah. You know? Uh, it says, these steps have caused some unrest within India, in which, like you said, India's got a lot of people. Further domestic disturbances in India and Pakistan could lead to World War III. While this is unlikely, it could lead to terrorist attacks internationally or in Kashmir. Prime Minister Mahdi might then feel forced to bring on more serious conflict given China's vicinity, and the growing relationship between Delhi and Washington could lead to more disastrous international implications. Uh, we got two more. Yeah, these are where it starts to get a little juicy. Uh, North Korea. U.S. and North Korea. Fundamental tensions at the heart of the U.S.-North Korea relationship could result in competitive action. Tensions between the countries now stand as high as any time since 2017. And the U.S. impending U.S. election could Im imperial relations further. Imperial, sorry. Uh, President Trump's administration appears to hold out uh, hope that a deal with North Korea could improve its electoral prospects in November. But North Korea has little to no interest in Mr. Trump's offering. Recently, North Korea promised a Christmas present that many in the United States worried would have been a nuclear or ballistic missile test. However, that was not the case. But, as you may have heard in the news recently, they did another test. Yes. So, yeah. when they so said they, they said that they were going to be done doing tests, that they didn't want to start anything, but then they did a test recently. So, this, this article isn't actually brand new. It's just been edited. So, it's been recently. updated, and they added things to it. Um, that, that add to so, basically, they took the article that. down and republished it uh, yeah. today. Yeah. And then it, it, was, it was updated time, twice. So. And I think that was just factual stuff that they probably changed. Uh, it looks like it, with the way it's written, I, th I feel like this was written in January because of the dates and uh, stuff. I feel like it was written in, like, September. Well, it talks about how they didn't... Are they, wait, do, do, you mean, do you mean January of this year or last year? January of this year. Because, like, January 3rd or something, because it, it, it related to a date. I saw a date well, where it said, like, January 3rd. Made, yeah, yeah that, no, that makes sense. I guess, uh, I guess. And that, so basically it was saying that... Uh, let me see. Uh, last Thursday, okay. Last Thursday. See, I'm trying to find a date, and it doesn't mention the date again. It says if a global pandemic doesn't cause China to calm things down on the South China Sea, there's not much that will. So basically, it says despite like everything going on with COVID, they've still kind of been chugging along. Yeah, they've kept all their military troops where they are, and kept kind of like rotating them out you know because obviously they can't keep troops there forever they have to like send yeah. people home um china has admitted that it has a maritime militia and it's a clear violation of international law so they've admit that like they're breaking treaty policies and stuff by having yeah, which I'm so sure much the un is exactly happy about that yeah, but what's the un doing right now because everybody's worried about the pandemic still it's not like any of it's going away. They're talking about... I mean, the, the Canada, they're calling it a third wave. And they've talked about that happening here. Third wave of COVID? Yeah. Bro. What all I'm, I'm going to say is... They said I'm this glad all, I left Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> they, said, they said this was all going to be done by the summer. And the summer is almost here. And it's still an issue. Yeah. I, so. so I didn't think it was going to be done for two years, to be honest. I, that's, that was my... Well, I was talking to I was talking to somebody on the podcast, and I said, "Do you think we're gonna like actually? Do you think the whole U.S. is actually gonna go back to like not having masks by the end of the year?" And I said, "I don't think so." Yeah. You know, I just I I feel like there's still gonna be places, especially like California and stuff, where they're just not gonna not gonna um, want to get rid of them. My there's there's one more. If you want to get through that real quick, and it's the one we were talking really about. So my my. My first shift on my last week um, at Best Buy, I asked my supervisor, 
I was like, hey, do you think, like, we're going to be done wearing masks soon? He goes, uh, probably. I don't know. I mean, it might be a while. And I was like, well, let me ask you this. I was like, do you think people are going to continue to wear masks after COVID? And he goes, uh, you know what? That's a good point. I don't think so. I think there's going to be people who will still wear masks, but I don't think it'll be, like, a, a majority. And I was like, interesting. Because I, I, I think that uh, because masks are politicized, that people will purposely continue to wear masks just because, like, they think it'll be a symbol or something. I don't know. Well, I, I definitely think that – I definitely think that even if – even if Biden was – if even if he said, all right, no more masks, there's going to be a lot of people who still wear them out of habit, out of feeling safe. Yeah. So I don't think they're going away anytime soon. The interesting thing is I can't wait to see um I mean saying I can't wait sounds bad but I'm curious how many people have gotten away with like robbery and stuff because everybody's wearing masks now. I know, dude. I've been thinking the exact same thing and like <clears throat> uh, I mean do you do you like the masks? Do you like wearing them or no? I don't like wearing them but they've become normal. Cuz I like the masks. I don't. They don't I mean, you look at what they do, and they, it, if you sneeze with a mask on, like, they're going to help a little, but... Well, it's, it's not the point. For me, I like wearing the mask because I just, like, I, uh, I guess it makes me feel a little bit, like, more... Or actually, I'd say I, I feel a little less, like, uh... Not, I don't want to say the word insecure because I'm not insecure. It's, I just feel I, I feel more confident going out with the mask because I don't, I'm not worried about people looking at my face the entire time. Because obviously, like I have acne, right? And so having to worry about that for some reason, just I don't know. Or like if I make a weird face or something, you know? Like my just... my thing has always been that I feel like people recognize me, but they don't know for sure because I have a mask on. Uh, because people when I, still recognize me. Yeah. When I was at the zoo. I don't know if mom and dad told you, but people came up and were like, hey, Danny. And, yeah. my, and, yeah. and dad was like, how the hell did they like know? Because you have a mask on yeah. and all that stuff. And I was like, it's probably because my jacket says elevate. Yeah. And so does my mask. So. You have an Represent? Mask? Yeah. I want one. <laughs> I, I think they still have it. But uh, yeah, it's just. I, 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 guarantee, I will bet money on this. I think we're going to start to see issues where people are going to get vaccinated. And so they're not going to wear masks, and then people are going to start, like, arguments in public, big, like, scenes, and be like, hey, you don't have a mask on. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm vaccinated, you know? And they're like, oh, show proof. Like, you know, where's your proof? And well, then those, because those of that, yeah, because of that, people are saying they're going to want passports. Because there's yeah. the I, – I was reading – because I saw that pop up as local news on YouTube. Because when I go on yeah. YouTube, it shows local news. Uh, it was showing that the University of Albuquerque – or New Mexico, which are, it might be New Mexico, because I think pretty sure Albuquerque is the capital. It might is it? Well, it might be Santa Fe. Well, they have a. I think it's. I think you're right. Hold on. Capital of New Mexico is Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Okay, which is like yeah. I think an hour and a half from here or something, or it might be forty five minutes. Uh, but basically, what I was saying is that they're talking about how. When they go back to, they're talking about when they go back to school after the summer, that they're going to require passports, vaccine passports. Well, mom was talking about how apparently Doug Ducey is uh, not going to make people wear masks in school anymore. <sighs> Which I don't know how that's supposed to work because you're going to have some little kid is picking his nose. And I'm all... I'm just worried because right now the data, right now the data supports that it's affecting kids a lot more now. And kids are freaking I little, count. like, I, th I think they, they even have, in some equations where they've talked about, like, how fast it can spread, they even have, an a, like, an extra, they have a variable they, they, yeah, kids. they have a variable <laughs> for kids, because the kids are more likely to freaking lick doorknobs and stuff, they're just weird, dude. <laughs> like they do, man, they'll, they'll well, like, I mean, they'll touch something and then stick their finger in their nose, and then, like, wipe it on something, I'll, and... I'll admit, so, so, no offense, but when Little Man was here... The, there's times where he would just pick his nose, and then he's he's all, "Hey, can I can I can I see the like?" He'll try to like go in my room and stuff like that, and I'm like, "I'm like, dude, did you wash your hands?" And he's all, "No," and I'm like, "Go wash your hands, bro." Like, I get after him so all the time. Go, yeah. He'll what? So I'll, with him, he gets like a runny nose, uh, because I think he gets allergies. 
And so he'll have like a runny nose and he'll be like, and then like just rub it on something nearby. And I'm like, Keith, this dude is a little like spreader. <laughs> He's just spreading like, well, germs. You know, yeah, because when I, when, I when I was in middle school, my allergies were really bad. Um, if I was wearing a jacket <clears throat> and I had a runny nose and I'd like, you know, you just wipe it off really quick. Uh, I had I had to learn to like not use my sleeve because it would literally just like start to cake on there, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is disgusting." Yeah, it's nasty. It's nasty, bro. So yeah, I stopped doing that. I was like, I gotta find a like. Yeah. I think I started bringing like a little packet of tissues or something like that. Anyways, we got the we got the one last one. Um, Go for it. For the World War Three article, if you wanna. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, so U.S. China. Uh, oh, what a says, surprise! <laughs> the U.S. China relationship has been particularly intense. In recent years, a trade deal between the two countries would seem to alleviate some tensions, but implementations remain in question. Currently, the world's two largest economies are locked in a bitter trade battle. The dispute, which has simmered for nearly 18 months, has been the U.S. China imposed, uh, seeing the U.S. and China impose tariffs on hundreds of billions of dollars worth of one another's goods. Uh, President Trump has long accused China of unfair trading practices, intellectual property theft. While in China, there is a per perception that the U.S. is ende endeavoring to curb its rise as a global economic power. Which, I mean, that's not surprising. In a communist country, all they do is they just say, you know, that the U.S. hates us, and they spread yeah. propaganda. propaganda. So, well, actually, hold on. To be clear, they, it's propaganda not definitely gets used here. because they're fascists, just saying. And but, communism is I'm, an economic strategy. That's not yada, exactly yada, yada, what yada. I was getting at, though. What I was getting at is that in a country where there's so much censorship and control, yeah, yeah, that's propaganda fascism. is much more easily implemented. Uh, whereas here, yeah. I mean, not to get conspiracy political, but I think that the news definitely gets used to do that all the time. So I mean, it says, can you hear that? Okay, never mind. It was like little man complaining about something. Uh, it says, uh, at the same time, China has worked defiantly to assure that its relations with Russia, uh, to assure its relations with Russia, while the U.S. has sparked controversies with both South Korea and Japan, its two closest allies in the region. Trump and President XI. Dude, Russia's population is super tiny. Yeah, dude, Russia is like the biggest country with like the least amount of people. Well, it's because most of it's uninhabitable, dude. Because it's so damn cold there, yeah. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I know, bro. Every time uh, they, they try but, to invade Russia, everyone just freezes to death. But how crazy is, is it that with as small as the population of Russia is, they have the most nukes out of the whole world? Okay, all I'm going to say is, I got 3D printers, right? You can make that crap. I'm one person. Just make a bunch of crap with 3D printers, right? Doesn't mean it's high quality, right? So just because they they make nukes doesn't mean they're good nukes. Even a bad nuke can do destruction. <laughs> the bad nuke's probably worse. <laughs> bad nuke's probably worse because it's it's probably gonna detonate early or something, you know? Like, <laughs> oh god! <laughs> so instead of like blowing up an area, we just get nuclear fallout over a, a twice as big size of an area. Well, so, so bad nuke. The way that that works is instead of it being like a giant explosion with very little radiation. It's a it's a small explosion or a big explosion with a ton of radiation, which is what yeah. a dirty bomb is. A dirty yeah. bomb. That's yeah, a dirty bomb. Dirty yeah. <laughs> dirty bomb. You dirty yeah. bomb. Well, to be also to be fair, the Sar Bomba, the the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated, um, it was actually supposed to be like twice as big, but they neutered it so that it it wouldn't like destroy the planet. <laughs> Well, dude, so, I one thing that was crazy. It, it, let me get back to this because uh, this this whole section is important. Uh, but it says Trump, Donald Trump, and President XI, which I don't know how to say. It. Is it Xi? Uh, Chi. President Chi has staked much of their political reputations on the trade situations in each country, and therefore both incentivizes, or and and both have incentives for diplomatic and economic escalation. So both both us and China see that there is stuff to gain by escalating but at the same time we don't want to escalate it because it could you know like i said nobody wants to push that first domino uh if the situation were to escalate it could lead to military confrontation in areas such as south of the east china seas i 100 percent think that if world war three were to break out it would start in the sea 
we would be sending rockets at, at each other's battleships and stuff to begin with. That's why I think it's a really bad time to be in the Navy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm pronouncing the name right. So it I is think cheap. it's. Hey! It's, okay, okay, all right. Thank you, Eight uh, World History, for teaching me that so one thing. <laughs> it says, while some people may have thought that the tensions would de-escalate, the tension has escalated amid the amid yes. the con coronavirus pandemic. Uh, with Trump having accused the co the country of engineering the fact uh, the fatal infection in a laboratory, he claims to have seen evidence corroborating the developmental coronavirus from a Chinese lab. See, and Trump says that he saw evidence that that's exactly what happened, but. I mean, yeah, you saw, but, you know but I mean, is. you, yes, but you saw that, I mean, on the way in, I'm not saying that I like Trump or anything. Don't get me wrong. I think Trump right. talked way too much, got, got a big, he, he was a lot of bark and, and he, he could walk, he could talk the talk, but he couldn't walk the walk a lot of times. It's funny though. The only time, <laughs> the only time that he ever really shined was with his like trade stuff. And like anytime yeah. it had to do with something that was like business tactics, he asked, he was really good at that because he's a businessman. But yeah. uh, it says he okay. It says Trump announced uh, uh, Trump had announced that the United States was devising a strict response to China's proposed national security legislation for Hong Kong that plans to, would be and that the plans would be revealed very soon. And that was like the last thing that happened right before the whole Capitol thing. And then Trump basically just they were yeah, like, "Get well, him out of here." The, the thing is, though, with uh, with China and Hong Kong. I think if China was like, we're going to war with the United States, well, what essentially happened is a bunch of people would go, are you stupid? And then they would, like, revolt. And you'd have, like, resistance in China. I don't know, man, because, like I said, there's a lot of China that is just, they've been, they've been raised with the idea that, like, the U.S. is evil and wants yeah, to stop them from becoming... When, when you see what happened in, in Hong Kong, <clears throat> people hear about that. I'm sure, obviously, the internet is not as free over there, right? But, like, uh, um, it's... I, like obviously, I've never been there. I haven't. I didn't grow up there or anything like that. So I don't know how ingrained it is. But like, I mean, there's plenty of people from China who come here as tourists, and they're like, "Oh my god, this place is amazing!" Right? And like, I'm sure if people were like, "Hey, we're going to war with the United States," they'd be like, "What? Like, are you guys dumb? What are you doing?" But so the thing is, though, is you have to understand that when you see those big Chinese sounds messed up saying it like this, but you see those families from China, at like Disneyland. Yeah, those are the Chinese families that have money. Those aren't those aren't the people that are working in the That's factories true. and they're raised. You know, they're, they're they're literally there's a generation now in China that has been raised with the idea that the U.S. is evil and wants to stop China from remaining as like the biggest economic power because they are right now. They control. So much of the goods worldwide. A lot of stuff is made in China. And I'm, like I said, tr President Trump was trying to... He was trying to stop a lot of the manufacturing of goods in the U.S. coming from China and Mexico. He was trying to stop all that. Because he felt like that was part of the reason why we, we had fallen that. behind is because we were outsourcing everything. Yeah. He's like, it would bring more jobs. and it would. But the problem is, is it's more expensive to do everything here. Absolutely more yeah. expensive. Yeah, and and that's that's why like they propose all the UBI and stuff like that, which I I want to say right now, I think at this point <clears throat> kind of need it, because like bro, like I said, the three D printing thing, if I had a bunch of those and all of my products were like entirely plastic, like if I was a company that was doing that right, um yeah, I don't need to hire people. Maybe a couple people who would do maintenance on the printers. But I don't need to hire a single person. So when no one's getting any jobs, first off, that means no one has money to buy crap. And also, if someone did want to start a company and they didn't have a job because they couldn't get one, they're screwed. So. Yeah, you can go back and forth with a lot of stuff. It's. Yeah. It's a mess, man. And everybody thinks they are they have the right solution, but. Yeah. Every solution has its own cons, you know. All I know is that the last thing the last thing we should want is a country and my opinion this is just my opinion and I like to consider myself a moderate. I see I see arguments on both sides that make sense and seem fair. 
Uh, I, I, I think that both sides have their extremes, and I definitely don't care for a lot of those extremes. And one thing is that I think the worst thing we could do in a time like this is lay down and let China just walk over us. Like, it's just not... That's true. It's not. It's not. I, I mean, it's not good for anybody. I. I think. I think. Uh, the chances of us just going. All right, guys, <clears throat> walk, walk all over us. It's they're super low because you know how Americans are. You know we we. If if someone's like, oh, Americans are stupid. Most people are like, how dare you? What do you? What bro? What? How many wars have you won? Right? Like that's just usually how we are. And the instant China's like, we're going to take over. We're going to be like, dude, not happening. Not happening at all. But I don't think we've had a war with China. Like, I don't think, the last time well, someone had a war with China was World War II. And that's, that's when China was, like, still kind of behind on a lot of stuff. So if you type in when, when, when will World War III start, there is dozens of, I, I believe, at least a dozen articles that I saw where it was people saying that technically you could say it already started. With the trade stuff. Yeah. Like Fourth arc down. Yeah. yeah. With the trade stuff, with the pandemic, everything, it's just like stuff is really tense right now. But. Yeah. And it's, it's not like, a, isn't it Pearl Harbor where, like, um, like the movie where the planes start crashing into, the, like, uh, all the ships and then, like, uh, of course, for, for charge, it, we're talking about Pearl Harbor that was directed by like, Michael Bay, right? Well, they started torpedoing them. They weren't crashing into them. Well, the bottom line is what, what had happened was in that movie, I'm, I swear, maybe, maybe I'm imagining this, but there's literally a scene where one guy turns to the other and he goes, I think World War II just started or something like that. And I'm like, that's not what happened. They weren't just like, well, World War II just started. It was like... Yeah, it was definitely they, just they, a movie. They were saying yeah. that. Because the world, world War Two, <laughs> and at that time, everybody was saying World War Two already started. It was just you know yeah. when was the U.S. going to step in? Because yeah. when when the U.S. stepped into World War One, it was the beginning of the end of the war. Because <laughs> yeah. same thing happened with World War Two, yeah. Because everybody over there in that country was just like, like I mean, they were starving, they were all sick, low supplies, all this stuff, and then we just show up with like. Fresh fat troops, you know, not fat, but you know what I mean. Like they were all healthy and yeah, like well fed. And yeah, yeah, we're, and not only that, you know, the U.S. has always been like, all right, we're gonna come kick your ass, you know, like we were, and we were the ones that were making all the guns. Yeah. So we had tons of stuff to use. Yeah, it was a, uh, no, it was it was a big deal when we stepped in World War One. So everybody, back when World War Two was heating up in like the late, what was it like thirty nine? I think thirty nine was really when people were like, all right, when is the U.S. gonna step in? You know, because it was just inevitable. Because at the time, we were the biggest, you know, it was, we ran the world, to say the least. And and we we had already technically jumped into World War II because we were supplying the Allies with, why are there so many freaking planes? What is going on? Uh, world War Three. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, but we were already supplying the Allies with weapons. Yeah. Like that. And so we had already joined in a way. It's yeah. just that we, we, we had indirectly joined, we hadn't actually jumped in. And so the instant that Japan was like, we're going to start, you know, kamikazing you guys, we were like, mm, okay, now now we have an excuse. And then we started fighting. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, that's the thing that we, there's never been a world war that we've had where we've been the first ones to get involved, right? Yeah. And so, unless it was like China was like to suddenly just try and invade us, right? And then India stepped in, like pretty much. There's no way we're gonna have, I guess, an advantage or whatever, right? Because and, and like we're I so said, small compared to China. And, and this is not political. It, it's not a political bias. It's just kind of how the parties are right now. If if stuff were to start heating up, we would definitely not be the first ones to make a move because Biden would not be for it at all. He would be like, "We need to de-escalate this," you know. Uh, I'll say one thing. Um, every single time that a world war has happened, the person or the person, the uh, the country that has started it first lost. Well, I mean, there's only been two world wars, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm they saying. were both Germany. <laughs> it was both <laughs> Germany lost <Yeah>. twice. <laughs> they, started they started it and lost, lost twice. twice. 
Bro, what, dude, you know, do you hear this crap? Uh, I was going to say, before we end the podcast, I was going to say, for people who don't know, I mean, we're from a military town, so yeah. if you start he seeing a lot of military exercises or stuff, it's an air station too, so if you start seeing a lot of plane maneuvers and stuff, it might be training for something. Yeah, because we, we've got a ton of crap over here. Dude. Well, I remember the first time I saw a helicopter here, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That was like a couple years ago, though. But that's still yeah. scary to think about when you see a full-on freaking military helicopter. You're like, what's going on, bro? This plane. Uh, whenever, when I think of like World War Three, I immediately think of um, that I can't remember the movie. I can't remember what it's called, but it's the one where like China, like I think it might. It's either North Korea or Red China. Dawn? Red Dawn. Yeah, is it China or is it North Korea in that movie? I'm pretty sure it's China. They literally just yeah. start paratrooping into like U.S. neighborhoods. <laughs> Killing people in the yeah, streets. What, yeah. You're talking about the one from 1984 or the newer one? So the one from 1984 is the Russians, and then they made a new... A re, they they re, did a remake of it, and it was China. Is, it, is that the one with uh, Josh Peck? Yeah. Is it Josh Peck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, was that one even good? I, I don't remember. It had, it had uh, Chris Hemsworth in it, too, I think. Yeah, I thought that was him. He just looked way too skinny. <laughs> it was before Thor, I think. Yeah, it's 2012, I think. I got a yeah. oh no, so it would be around Thor when he started to get popular. Uh, His hair I, is really short in it, though. Yeah, I think I gotta watch that again because I'm curious to see like how it played out in that. Uh <laughs> it's it's like you're trying to see in the future by watching Red Dawn. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and then the other thing I was gonna say is I always think of like Modern Warfare Two with the Russians, you know, like. You're like literally driving through neighborhoods, like shooting at troops dude, and houses and dude. stuff. Or, or like in ghosts. Um, oh yeah, that's crazy uh, too. Well, the the one thing from Modern Warfare, the one that always sticks out to me is uh, when I think they're in Paris, right? And then like that that car stops and then it explodes and there's just like this gas attack. That that that's effed up, dude. Modern Warfare, I need I need to play those games, dude. I need to play them again. I, I gotta play through that games. campaign again now that like. Yeah. Because I think when I first played through it, I, uh, I can't, I, th I was still, I was still in the military, so I didn't play through it all at once. Like, I kind of, like, wait. played a little bit. Modern Warfare 2019. Dude. I'm not, talk I'm not talking about that one. Yeah, I know, but that, one, that yeah. campaign is sick, bro. <laughs> I, I didn't like it. Really? I felt like it was way too cliche. Like, there were some cool missions, but the story was way too cliche. Well, I think that Modern Warfare 2 is going to be like World War 3, like like the other one was, so. No, no. If that was Modern Warfare 3, that was World War 3. Because well, I remember the Modern Warfare 2 the was M the start of it. The upside down, I was like, oh, it's just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the gnome. The gnome. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but, dude, like, oh, my God. Yeah, I need, I need to play through that, that entire series again. Because. When I, when I played Modern Warfare Remastered and I played through the campaign, I was like, dang, man, I never got to experience this when I was younger because pretty much all I remember playing was all gillied up because that was the cool mission, right? And I was like nine. And uh, no, that, that, that trilogy, besides the third one, obviously being kind of half-assed because there was so much going on with the lawsuit and like people getting... Dang, man. Was, I remember uh, Robert, was it Robert Belling that left? Yeah, he left like in the middle of that uh but basically they th i think vince ampella and then somebody else it was like the two head people at infinity ward basically got caught de like delaying and obviously we don't hear about it being delayed like they just tell us oh this is the date you know and like it technically should have been out weeks before that and what happened was they actually delayed their dlc uh, because they had like made like a under the table deal with EA and Battlefield, They're like oh yeah, we'll we'll push it off to give you guys a chance to like. I, there was something going on. I don't know. They they were basically friends with the people at EA, and, and that's where and, Rainbow Entertainment came from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly and, where it came from. And let's be fair, like the Titanfall games are good, but they just didn't didn't reach anywhere well, near the popularity. If Titanfall 3 comes out, it's going to blow up. I hope so. That's what they said about Titanfall 2. Well, yeah, but now that Apex Legends is out, 
Yeah. Because it's made of the same people. More so. people be on board. Uh, but what was I gonna say? The last thing I wanted to talk about was, I don't know if you saw, but once again, we got some uh pictures and footage of a of a UFO that got declassified and what? acknowledged. Uh, there was some like night vision footage of a triangle shaped UFO. Uh, it was that March I can't. We can actually, if you want to pull up the picture or whatever it is, we can react uh, to it. Can you send it to me? That way I know if I'm getting the right one. That way I can just screen share. I don't even know. Sure. Um, triangle shaped UFO. The gov our government basically said it's real and it, uh, we don't know what it is it's not ours he said it's not ours uh here have, it is. Has, have any other countries said anything about it or no i don't think so i let me here i'm gonna send it to you and then there you pause go it? no no i said stream paused okay so this is you see this what the heck is that bro? it's three lights dude is that a freaking Dorito? <laughs> <laughs> the panic, yeah. So, Bro. and that they're saying that it, it has it looks like a UAP. And of course, they say UAP, so it's actually like current. Bro. Yeah, that they said that is real. Ah, dude. <laughs> Did they say where it was? This this is CNN, so they're super vague about stuff. Uh, I can check in a second. I want to at least see the rest of this. Or is it just showing older footage? Yeah, I don't know. Hold on, let me go back to the beginning then. Um, because all I'm seeing is it's, it's from a Navy pilot. Wait. Pause it right there. Oh, oh well, thanks for telling me that. Like, Sorry. After, hold on. Pause it. Right there. So do you see, I see three triangles, not just one. No, I see one triangle. Oh, do you mean like, like. It's right, in the right shape, like, I think we're right seeing, here, right here, I, right I, th here. I think what they're focusing on is just the front has like a pulsating light on it. But I think that thing is huge. You mean, I think that whole triangle like a is a freaking. Star Destroyer, bro? Ah, oh, It's okay, so it's, it's, it's either one giant triangle or there's three flying in a formation. It's either one of those big Doritos or one of the crumbs. <laughs> yeah, like you know what I mean. Like it's either a formation yeah. or it's it's one giant triangle. Oh, because they're say it's that, moving man. in unison. Is but it? that one, yeah. But look, that one is. They keep zooming in on the one that's flashing. And that's not moving in unison, dude. It looks like it look, to me. It, no, no, the, the back two are, are going forward, and this one's just staying still. Look at this. So. Oh, they move apart from each other. I don't know if that's, that's a reflection weird. or if that's a some kind of... It, it could be a reflection, but it's still creepy either way. It's an it's alien armada! <laughs> Dude, it's, the fact that it's flashing means it, that it's not like... You ready uh, to switch back? Yeah. Um, the fact that it's flashing means that something something is... Like, it's... It has to be man-made. You have to close that. pulses like that were synchronized or not. You have to close. We have to close that. Oh. Close the screen share. There you go. Um. <clears throat> yeah, dude. That's. Where does it does it say where that was filmed? Uh, that's what I'm looking at right now. Well, that it says that was I mean, leaked. It did say Navy, so it's, it, I mean, obviously it's out in the freaking ocean. It says it was leaked, it was though. Like, it wasn't supposed to be Leaked released yet. And video of unidentified... Yeah, it doesn't specifically say where. So, did you hear what Snowden said? No. I think, Snow I, I think it was Snowden who said that he looked, and he said that either he didn't have the clearance for that stuff, or... Oh, that? Yeah. Those programs were... Up. Or those things were completely kept separate from... Like all of the the database that the CIA uses. 
The thing is, though, Snowden, I don't... Didn't they say they were going to pardon him and then they never did? No, they, people were saying that it, if it, it would be, it would look good on Trump if he pardoned him because Snowden caused Which a lot of changes. Did, they like they, they, they had to him? they had to disclose and change stuff because they were like, all right, yeah, we're overstepping bounds. He, he, but he, he, we never pardoned him just because like he didn't nope, have a reason. To that do dude it. is still hiding somewhere. I mean, that sucks for him. But the thing is, like, even if, even if he did get pardoned, he probably wouldn't come back. Yeah, I don't think I, too I many people want him for... dead. Yeah. If I was him, I would. Yeah, I. I mean, does he at least have like donations coming in to keep him going? I mean, that like, dude. I know he has, the... he has books. That dude is gonna have to hide for the rest of his life. Which that sucks, man. Yeah. At, least he, at least he gets like attention for it. Like people are like, "Hey, man!" Like. Yeah, but he can't. Dead. He can't, can't trust anybody. Yeah. Yeah, which he must have to go through like four different VPNs or something before he can make <laughs> like a video interview. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks, man. Anyways, yeah. The world is crazy, man. There's a lot going on. A lot of people focused on the, the COVID thing and going back to school and work and well, not so much about what's what... going on outside of all that. So, the the theory that I always had, I think we talked about this on the UFO episode, that the alien episode, I should say. Uh, which was that was the first episode, wasn't it? I think yeah. so. We talked about Bob Lazar uh, in Area Fifty One. Pretty sure that what I what I had mentioned at one point was that I'm like ninety percent sure it's not actually aliens when we see crap like that. It's just a, a country that's like um, that's got really good tech and just isn't admitting it. And it could be us, or it could be a different country that we're not friends with. But that because I mean, like, I mean, I can see if I can find. I have a video. It scared the crap out of me the first time I saw it. I don't know if this is going to get kept in, but we couldn't find the video that I was looking at, and we both kind of have to go, so. Um, yeah. World War Three, UFOs. Dude, that, that rabbit hole freaks me out now. I'm the black, like, uh, yeah. All night, bro. The uh, triangle uh, UFO rabbit hole. Uh, Just the, the fact that they had acknowledged footage of one opens a big door. So creeped out. <laughs> the thing um, is, is like, there's nothing we can do about it. They're just here. Um, you know? Unless it's like, you know, something that's secret that the government's doing. Which I I like, don't believe the government can keep secrets like that without somebody saying something. It's just not. I mean, look at Snowden. Well, unless it's not our government. I mean, like I said, look at China and the whole COVID thing. Like, there's so many people talking about, like, whistleblowing and stuff like that about everything. Yeah, but that's because they have a reason to. If you're making spacecraft that is, like, super... Not spacecraft. I mean, aircraft. Bob Lazar said something. Yeah, but people don't believe him still. A lot more people do than they did. That's than fair. did, you know? So. That's fair. Um... In June, they're supposed to release a bunch of stuff. They're supposed to declassify a bunch. That was a part of that bill, that COVID relief bill. Yeah, that's true. It was the UAP declassification. Uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll definitely have to do an episode where we deep dive on that. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, all right. That's going to be it for this episode. Until next week. Later, guys. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.